Welcome back to the street. We're going to talk about bricks of a very different kind. We're talking about the global organization today. Right now, we are going to be talking about the bricks that build things. Brickworks up or off by around about two and a half percent today. Broader market is seeing weakness, so don't read too much into it. But they also did have their AGM. And joining us now, hot on the heels of that, very pleased to be able to welcome Lindsay Partridge. He is Managing Director at Brickworks and he's joining us now. Lindsay, thanks so much as always for being here now. We had a chat uh, couple of months ago on the back of your earnings and from there to now in terms of you know some of the trends you're seeing some of you know particularly when it comes to industrial properties are we seeing further improvement moving forward from where we were a couple of months ago well there's a lot of different markets we're in um if we're looking at industrial property um uh, you know it's, it's been sort of pretty liquid and we're having a bit of trouble there with you know, revaluations but Longer term, I mean, we don't have a square metre of space available and we've, we've got lots of interest in in uh, building up new buildings for, for major corporations. So I think longer term, we're in a very, very good position. Um, just a bit of softness now called by really the volatility in the world economic markets. But but that's uh, it's a great business. It's got great prospects long term. Indeed, uh, and that's showing up on the wall with the 12-month return uh, going at 21%, uh, Lindsay. I do want to get your sense mm -hmm. in on how do you see the prospects shaping up at a time when there's uncertainty on rates, there's uncertainty on the inflation picture? Yes, inflation is coming off, and that's much to, uh, you know, to enthuse uh, central banks around the world to say, you know, maybe mm. down the line rate cuts could be a possibility. But how do you look at uh, that, that variable impacting your business? Well, if I look at the, the building product side of the business, I mean, I'm looking at Australia, we had massive uh, immigration. We've got record low uh, vacancy rates. We, we've got to build more houses. So I know interest rates have gone up and might affect first home buyers, but historically, you know, a seven and a half or eight percent interest rate on your mortgage is not the end of the world. And I think once people can see that it's stabilised, well, then a little bit more confidence will come back and people are prepared to make their commitment uh, to build a house because uh, people have got to live somewhere. And we're seeing a similar sort of situation in the United States that 70% um, of people have a mortgage, a 30-year fixed mortgage, less than 4%. Well, they're not selling. So there's no houses available for sale. The only way you can get a house in the United States today is to build one. So we've seen the builders over there, their sales have increased like 30 mm. plus percent in the last few months. But Lindsay, a lot of those um, home builders, they've had to engage in some pretty hefty, you know, rebates, price cuts in order to try and mm. um, juice demand because obviously people are doing it tough and no one wants to take on that additional loan. So do you think, because it obviously impacts your business, do you think that these central bankers, they're going to be breaking something because they're insisting and for a raft of perhaps valid reasons that, you know, they have to keep rates higher, be it the RBA, be it the Fed, but, it, but are you worried that they're going to hold too high for too long and it's going to fundamentally break something? Well, if you looked at what you thought might break, you'd have to go to commercial property, wouldn't you? I mean, you know, a lot of people are working from home. There's not the demand that there was for space. And so, you know, I've heard of some of the organisations here having 20 or 30% vacancy. So that would have to be there. You'd look at to think about breaking something. Um, the other one is that people have bought or, uh, borrowed money in non-traditional areas. We think, well, you know, when they come to refinance that, what happens? Can they, can they afford the higher interest rate that they're going to have to pay? And particularly if they've got a business that's a bit of a zombie business. So that'd be the areas I'd be looking at if I thought something was going to break. Uh, but, you know, the area we're in, I'm sort of you know, pretty confident in the longer term. There's, there's no doubt we're going to have a quiet year next year. But longer term, I think our, our prospects are very good. Uh, how are rents shaping up? How is the rental market shaping up, Lindsay? Well, it's, it's virtually less than a percent. I mean, you see lines of people 100 metres long trying to rent a one-bedroom apartment. It's incredibly tight. It's never been this tight. And we've got this immigration of seven and 800,000 people. On top of that, we've got the government here in Australia saying they want to build 240,000 homes a year, and we're currently building about 175. So there's, it's, they've got to um, you know, clear the obstacles that are stopping the approval process. They've got to, we've got to immigrate more trades. We've got to get people to actually build those houses. Um, you know, and then we've got half a chance. Um, and eventually, I think the fact, as I said, if interest rates stabilise, people have confidence, I can afford it today, I'm not going to have to pay a higher rate later on. And that's what scares them, I think, that scares them away. They think they're not sure what it's going to really cost. And once they stabilise, as you say, uh, whether it's six months or 12 months they come off, I think the main thing is we see stabilisation of that interest rates as inflation comes down.
Right. Uh, and let's say very quickly, uh, are, you, uh, are you lining up CapEx? Uh, how are you thinking about capital expenditure in this environment? Very quickly. Yeah, well, look, yeah, look we've done an enormous amount of CapEx in the last five, ten years, and so we're going to be quiet for a little bit. Um, you know, we, as I said, if trading turns down, we just want to watch our dollars for a year or so and just see how things turn out. Lindsay, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really do appreciate it and all the best over the next few months. Thank, That's thank you for having Partridge. me. You're very welcome, mate. That's Lindsay yeah. Partridge coming through from Brickworks. Thank you. I just saying bye. Uh, <laughs> Switching gears though, JP Ong is here to talk time. GP. GDP, now. JP. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, guys. And uh, you know, it's been a day since the markets actually had to adjust the GDP print that actually underwhelmed 1.5% growth, which was well below what uh, economists surveyed by Reuters were expecting. But more interesting perhaps to see the market reaction today. We are seeing the Thai markets, the Thai set actually up so far today, uh, just uh, gaining a little bit of ground or gaining to about 1,424 points there. The Thai bot also doing, uh, finding some strength of some firmer ground actually in today's session. While the banking and tourism stocks are also worth looking at because we also want to take into account recent comments from the Bank of Thailand, actually, where they actually acknowledged that loan growth in the third quarter in Thailand actually contracted by about 0.9%. And they did say that the NPL ratio or non-performing loans could actually increase a little bit, but that it is still manageable. Now, in their recent survey, the Bank of Thailand said that the overall NPL ratio for the banking system is about 2.7%. But I wanted to take a look at, at the NPL ratios of the four biggest lenders in Thailand. And based on their latest quarterly reports for the third quarter, you'll see the likes of Bangkok Bank, Kasakorn Bank, Krum Thai, and also SCB all have NPL ratios above or at 3%, which is also well above the overall banking system's overall NPL ratio, which calls to question just how well the banks are actually going to do and whether or not this is going to be a concern for them moving forward because they are the four biggest lenders in Southeast Asia's second largest economy. Just quickly, want to take a look at Airports of Thailand, also one of the biggest stocks on, in Thailand, and they did report that the net profit for the fiscal